Okay, so you want to create a summary table in Microsoft Excel. I'm going to show you two methods, one with formula and the other with a pivot table. So let's get going. So here's my data. These are all transactions and I have nearly 16,000 records. To create a summary table, the idea is that you pick out unique values from one column. And for us, that's going to be the branch column and then perform some sort of calculation on other columns. So we're going to count the number of transactions and then add up all the revenue in the revenue column. Now with both methods that I'm going to show you, your first step is to house your data within an Excel table. And that's easy to do. All you do is you click in a cell in the data and then use the keyboard shortcut Control T. In this resulting dialog box, you just click on OK. And then you'll get a contextual tab on your ribbon, which is named Table Design. Over on the left here, you've got a table name box, and you should really give the table a name. So we'll call this Transactions. Press Enter to store your name. So the first method I'm going to show you is going to use Formula. And we're going to use the unique function to pick out all the branch names, the unique branch names in column B. Now, the unique function is only available in more recent versions of Excel, but you can see whether you have it. If you just type equals U, unique should appear in the IntelliSense list. So if you can see it there, double click on it. And then we need to select the column that we're going to extract unique values from. And to do that, just place your mouse pointer over the column heading that you want to extract unique values from. For us, that's branch. And you'll see you'll get a little black arrow pointing down. Just click once. And in our formula, it now says transactions, which is the name we gave the table. And then in square brackets, the name of the column that we clicked on. Close the formula with a round bracket, press enter, and you get all the unique branch names. Now, if we want those branch names in alphabetical order, we can use the sort function. So you're going to put the unique formula within the sort function. So it's sort open bracket, then your unique formula, and then another close bracket at the end. Press enter, and you've got the branches in alphabetical order. Now to calculate the number of transactions for each of those branches, we're going to use a function called count if. Count if has two arguments, range and criteria. So range is where you're counting. For us, that's the branch column. And criteria is what you're counting within that column. So that's going to be each of these individual branch names. So range would be a matter of just selecting the branch column again. So I place my mouse pointer over the column heading. I've got a little black arrow pointing down. I click once. So it then says transactions branch within my formula, comma. And the criteria are these branch names here. So what I can do is just select the first branch name and then type a hash. And that will select all the other branch names. Close the bracket, press enter, and it gives me a count of transactions in each of those branches. Now, to calculate the revenue, we can use a function called SUMIF. So SUMIF has three arguments. Range, range is where you're going to apply your criteria. So for us, that's the branch column. So I select that again, comma. A criteria, well, that's the same as the criteria for COUNTIF. That's these branch names. So I select the first branch, type a hash comma, and then some range is the column that you want to add up corresponding values in. And for us, that's the revenue column. So I select the revenue column the same way as I selected the branch column, little black arrow above the column heading, click once. And then in my formula, I can see I've got transactions revenue. Close with a round bracket, press enter, and I get all of the revenues. If I want to format those as currency, I select them. Control Shift 4 on my keyboard, and I've got currency format applied to those revenue figures. Okay, let's look at the second method, which uses a pivot table. Now, to use this method, I've already got my data in a table. I click somewhere in the data, then I go to the Insert tab on my ribbon. I click on the Pivot Table button, and then I need to say where I want the pivot report to be placed. So by default, it's going to place it on a new worksheet. I'm going to say existing worksheet, and then I just need to select a single cell. So I'll say G15. Click on OK. 
Now again, what we've got to do is display unique values from one field, and that's going to be the branch field. So all I need to do is tick branch here. And you can see I get those unique branch names, just like we had up here. Now I can rename my column heading branch. Then I need to count the number of transactions. Now to do that, I would drag branch into the values area. And because it's a text field, it forces the pivot table to count how many times each of these branch names appear in column B. And you can see I've got exactly the same results as the COUNTIF function up here. So I'll name that column number of transactions. And now I need to sum the revenue. Now to do that, I just drag the revenue field into the values area. And you can see I'm getting the same answers as the revenue up here. Now to format the revenue in a pivot table, you only need to right click on one of the values. Then you go to number format, and then you choose your currency format. Okay, so it was a lot quicker to use the pivot table method, but one advantage of using the formula method is this will update if you change or add data over here, whereas the pivot table will need refreshing. I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna add a new record to our database. So I'm gonna add today's date. Shortcut key for that is control semicolon. Then I'm gonna add a branch name that doesn't currently exist in our table. Then I'm going to say it's clothes, web, and 222 as the revenue value. Right, I'm going to go back to the top of the sheet. And what you'll notice is that Keswick now appears within the table that we used formulas in. And it's automatically placed in alphabetical order in the branch column here. Whereas down here, I see no sign of Keswick. And that's because if you're using a pivot table, you need to refresh it. So you right click in your pivot table and you choose refresh. And then if I wanna get these sorted properly, I'd have to go up here and then say A to Z. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.